You know the saying, a picture says more than a thousand words. Well, so does body language. Other than paying attention to what people say, we usually only focus on how they say it, their tone of voice. I'm not a racist, I just want to watch the movie. I'm only going to say this one more time, sir. Calm down. I'm calm! But there's a lot more going on with what they're not saying. How people behave and express themselves goes way beyond their words as their body language alone can reveal a lot about what they're thinking and feeling. Research suggests that 60 to 90% of our communication is non-verbal. Professor Albert Mehrabian, a pioneer researcher of body language, found through extensive studies that only 7% of a message is conveyed through words. 38% is communicated through vocal elements and 55% through non-verbal elements. You heard that right, 55%. Violence or, you know, sound like I'm promoting violence. This means that as a coach learning how to read the non-verbal cues your clients or potential clients send while communicating with you is highly valuable skill. Hi, this is Ajit Navlaka and today we are talking about the most important cues to look out for when reading your client's body language. Whether we are talking or not, we all reveal hidden messages through our bodies and movements. Most of the time, this happens unconsciously, which is why it's such a crucial skill to decipher what your client is really saying underneath it all. There are so many different emotions and thoughts we can express through body language. We can't possibly cover them all here. So today, we'll focus on four types of body language and the most relevant cues you want to know to use in your next coaching conversation. The first type is eye contact. The eyes are the window to the soul. Paying attention to your client's eyes is one of the easiest ways to read their body language as they are very expressive. I can do it. And usually not that creepy. One of the most obvious traits of eye behavior is where your client is looking. Do they make direct eye contact with you or are they looking away? Inability to make direct eye contact could be signs of lying, boredom, or disinterest. If they look down, however, it often indicates nervousness or submissiveness. There is also glancing. Glancing at something or someone may reveal a hidden desire. For example, glancing at the door may suggest your client wants to leave, or glancing at someone may suggest they want to approach that person. Another cue you can look out for is their blinking rate. We tend to blink more when we are thinking more or when we are stressed. And in some cases, it can also be a sign of lying, especially when it's combined with face touching. So if you see your client's blinking rate increased in an unusual way, they might be hiding something. The second type of body language are facial expressions. Facial expressions are the voluntary and involuntary movements of our facial muscles that express various different emotions. We are naturally drawn to observing someone's face to understand their hidden emotions. Extensive research in this topic concluded seven universal micro expressions. I recommend you to spare some time to Google research on them later on. For now, I want to share with you two important cues of facial expressions. First up is smile. On average, a smile uses 12 facial muscles, which will vary depending on the type of smile. There are genuine smiles, fake smiles, and half smiles. And the type of smile that can't even cover up, that we are lying. It's so tasty too. It's just like candy. So how to tell the kind of smile your client is sharing with you? When it comes to smiling, the mouth can lie, but the eyes cannot. A genuine smile engages the whole face, especially the eyes. 
look for their laugh lines or the tiny crinkles at the corner of their eyes. If they aren't there, it most likely means that you're receiving a fake smile. A fake smile only uses the mouth muscles and is usually used to convey pleasure or approval. A half smile, however, is a facial behavior that only engages the muscles on one side of the mouth and it often indicates sarcasm or uncertainty. The second cue are the eyebrows. There are three main emotions that make us raise our eyebrows which are surprise, worry and fear or all three of them at the same time. I'm pregnant. <laughs> it's usually a sign of discomfort and it's pretty easy to spot. However, if you notice your client raises their eyebrows on a topic that wouldn't logically cause surprise, worry or fear, it might mean there is something else going on you want to pay attention to. What facial expressions have you found your clients doing most? Drop us a comment below and share your experience reading the body language of your clients. Let's go into the third type of body language, which is body movement and posture. Our body movement can reveal a lot about our preferences and nervousness. Is our client leaning forward or backward? Are they moving towards us or away from us? Are they still or are they changing their body position every five seconds? There are four cues you want to look out for. Firstly, crossed arms and legs may signal resistance to your ideas. Think of them as physical barriers, suggesting a defensive blocking gesture. Welcome to my world. <laughs> not welcome to my world. <laughs> welcome, not welcome. It's highly likely that if your client crosses their arms or legs at you, they're not open to what you're saying even if they're smiling and engaged in the conversation. It could also signal anxiety, vulnerability, or a close mind. Another cue you want to notice is exaggerated nodding. When in conversation with a client, if you see them nodding excessively at what you're saying, it could mean they're worried about what you think of them and are communicating approval anxiety. Another body movement we tend to use a lot are our hands. If you know anything about sign language, you know there is a possibility to have a full-on conversation using only your hands. Get started for you today. Express yourself. Uh -oh. What size? All right. Three venti lattes. Uh, would you care for? If you know what you're doing, of course. But our unconscious hand movements can say a lot about what we are thinking. Observe if your client's hands are in their pockets when standing or sitting. This often indicates nervousness, boredom, or outright deception. Another cue is pointing when making hand gestures, especially in group settings like meetings and group coaching. While talking, a participant will unconsciously point in the direction of another person in the group with whom they share an affinity with. Last cue you can look out for is if your client holds an object between him or her and you. This is often interpreted as a barrier, meaning to block out the other person or to express rejection or resistance. And then the second part of this body language type, the posture. Do you know that feeling when someone walks into a room and you can immediately tell they are in charge? to confirm the point. I know, I'm so sorry, Miranda. I actually did the confirm last night. The details of your incompetence do not interest me. Tell Simone I'm not going to prove that girl that she said. You'll probably notice they walk in with an erect posture, relaxed hands and palms facing down, and gestures that exude confidence and authority. Our brains are wired to associate power with the amount of space people take up. Your client's posture can tell a story on its own. Standing or sitting up straight with their shoulders back in a power position, it commands respect and engagement. Opposite to that is slouching, which takes up less space and projects less power. And last but not the least, 
we have ornaments. This is not an obvious element and many people overlook it. But it can also reveal a lot about our non-verbal communication. Our clothes, jewelry, hairstyle and accessories are all extensions of our body language. On the other hand, the styles and colors we use are useful cues. For example, colorful ornaments can express a bright personality and a joyful mood, while dark or monochromatic ones can express sadness or depression. But it's not only what we wear, but how we interact with our ornaments. Does our client fidget and play with their watch or their ring? Are they constantly touching their hair or fixing their clothes? These could be signs of discomfort, boredom, or anxiety. So let's recap these four most common types and cues of body language you want to know to hone your ability to read body language. First are the eyes, where we talked about eye contact, glancing, and blinking. Then we covered facial expressions, where we highlighted smiles and eyebrows. Thirdly, we talked about body movement and posture, the signs made by our arms, legs, head, and hands. And lastly, our ornaments and how we interact with them. Mastering these elements is a great start for you to understand your clients better and be able to serve them even better. But there's a disclaimer. These tips can give you great insight, but they're not foolproof and will not apply to all people 100% of the time. Different cultures and backgrounds and individual body language habits can influence each person's non-verbal cues. Understanding body language is one of the top coaching skills every world-class coach needs. Click here to watch the video where we reveal the other three skills you want to focus on. What other body language cues have you often observed in conversations? Share it with us in the comment section below. And don't forget to smash that like button and share it with someone who can also use this information. Subscribe to our channel for more amazing content like this. Thank you for watching and have a phenomenal day.